That took long enough to get the video out. Uh, I, it was supposed to be split into two videos, but then they finished uh, the tour very early. It's like much, much earlier than last month. So I had to combine the two together and, you know, do some stuff. Shenanigan. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. We got the full footage here of the upper bracket and the final of the lower bracket, I believe. Oh, it should, should be fine. Mm. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> here comes the video. Uh, thank you all for watching. Elias vs. Gazer. Mega Latias was Gaza's choice, which certainly sent him to a darker path with Elias Weaver waiting at the end of the road. The other calm minder on Elias' side didn't seem to be in his most comfort zone either, with Ferrothorn and Kelio blocking his way. Started with a nice skill on Mega Latias, predicting it to stay in on turn number 10 that he would pursue, but then he icicle crashed and managed to kill it. Elias tried to pull the Suicon sweep early, but got forced out by emergency whirlwind from Gazers he pounded on. And then later he tried to pull it off again with Suicon switch on the Mandibus U-turn, and then burnt the Ferrothorn early. But unfortunately, Ferrothorn's power whip still enough to break the stuff. Not in a dangerous uh position though as Suikun can just stall all the power whip out but that allows Gaza to make a nice prediction to bring in Keldeo to threaten Suikun with secret sword. Then they proceeded to showcase the worst move in the game altogether with Mega Gardevoir from Elias and Keldeo from Gaza. Elias hit the one that matters on Ferrothorn so he got the edge this time. He later also hit another one on Escadrill with a good prediction, predicting the Toxic. Escadrill and Ferrothorn gone, Gaza has no chance of winning anymore as Elias took the first game. Not giving up on the idea of Mega Latias, Gaza, however, changed the flavor a bit. This time, Reunicus plays the Latias role. There was still a dark type on the other side this time but it's a shapeshifter frog who's one remaining to be dark type when it makes its moves. And so Gaza decided to pull the trigger very early. He set up a, f a few calm minds, you know, just, just a few, just, just make sure. And then Iron Defense, you know, have, have to be, like, be caution, precaution. Yeah, that's his motto, right? Finger crot, he believed he wouldn't get crit at that point, as it was the only thing that could stop him from sweeping. Elias then tried everything to rebrand the sweep. Uh, for example, he tried to PP stall the side shock by sw switching on Greninja on the right turn, but then it wasn't enough. Gaza took game number two. Playing it safe, Elias brought rain in game number 3. Gaza didn't think the same as he brought hyper offense with shuckle lead. The hazards then cleared by the fog tornadoes, but Elias made a mistake on turn 16. He let Mega Scizor set up a second source stand by roosting instead of scalding. Not expecting a fast adamant Scizor, I suppose. And just like game number 2, Elias' Pokemon fell over to a single setup mon. This time was an aggressive bug. Rather than fast game, it's more than enough to take Gaza to the next round. Oda vs Leo Safe bet from both sides with two consistent teams, Rain and Stall, failing to cause troubles with Tail Glow, Manaphy, and ending up losing Tornadus. Oda built some momentum back by positioning his choice spec Volcanion into getting kills. That was proved to be a success as Volcanion took 3 kills, one on Gliscor, one on Chansey due to Leo's not clicking softball on his Chansey. 
uh, because it was under the rain and steam eruption is was quite quite strong at that time and then he weakened uh, Leo's Rotom to a point where it's almost dead it could still be used as a sack later it's not potentially wasted that did not come without a cost though since Volcanion took an earthquake hit from Gliscor making it now more vulnerable and did not have an easier time switching in anymore even though Leo lost almost all of his team, he still had Mega Venusaur equipped with Hidden Power Fire, which can deal with Oda's remainers. With Tornado Scorn and Volcanion being low, Oda had to switch around at the right turns in the end to get rid of Venusaur PP. If Venusaur runs out of HP Fire, it can't hurt Ferrothorn. That was still a tough task. Leo managed to get the number of turn rights before the fire ran out. He took the first game with Mega Venusaur clearly being the carry. With one win in his pocket, Leo trusted his team from last game once more. Mega Ladia Semi Stoff was Oda's choice, which could have made this game last very long. A wrong calculation from Leo though, as he thought his glass score was gonna survive the Magma Storm on turn 66 and lost to Hitran. He also lost his Rotom right after because Oda had glasses on and Magma Storm didn't disappoint him. Without Gliscor, Leo had no way to defog Oda's way of breaking right now suddenly became so simple. He stacked Hazard with 3 layers spike rocks on top, but slowly and surely chips Leo's Pokemon down. The inevitable came, inevitable. Oda secured the second game much faster than it should have been, with the two team being quite bulky. We are entering Oda's comfort zone. He brought his favorite uh, laddering team. Leo at the same time attempted to speed up the game with balance. On turn 24, Leo decided to throw his Magnezone away to weaken Gliscor, knowing that it will help his Mega Future a ton. But Oda saved his Gliscor and later healed it back up by a wish from Alamomora at Alamomola at the right turn, making Leo's sacrifice pointless. Ferrothorn was now even more difficult to deal with. For Leo, by letting his Tango poisoned, he, know, he now allowed Mega Lopany to have an opening. Oda positioned his Lopany nicely this game and carefully healed it back up with wishes. Lopany was be able to kick and punch through Leo's structure slowly and took over the game. Oda had a, mat, a hard match 1-2-1. Dodge vs DCP It's snowing and also raining, Veil Offense vs Rain. Dodge had no specific check to the storm on the other side but he can for sure manage the weather. Thunderous net a kill for him on Clefable and it was very important. Getting the first kill is always big because it can come down to the sack game in the end if the two teams can take one kill every time the weather changed. DCP was ready for the race though as he caught up quite fast by finishing off Landris and later on Thunderous plus Keldeo while losing his tornado is in the process. Then again, having Ferro in versus Edge Slash was not ideal for him though, as it turned out to be a sword stand variant. This caught his DCP his Pelipper and 99% held on Swamper, later picked off by Ninetales Hail. Go before going down, the Fox set up an Aurora Veil to ensure that Altaria could 1v1 versus Thunderous. Dodge took the first game. To make it feel more optimistic this time, DCP replaces the sad rain with the other two being sand and sun at the same time. Still using Altaria, but this time Dodge brought an impish one which was the perfect counter for Mega Charizard X, which DCP did bring instead of the conventional Zard Y in the duo weather team. Dodge, Heatran had a hard time this game and kept getting pursued by Tarantar, which loves Ixar so much. Heatran went down by Volt Switch after being severely weakened by Pursuit. DCP's Mantine also went down as well with an Icicle Crash. 
The 1v1 between two Megas ended up won by the Fairy Dragon, but it was also close to dying. On turn 28, DCP Pursued Tornado successfully opened a chance for his Venusaur to sweep. It wasn't that easy though, as Dodge Superior took advantage of Tarenta and got an early boost, allowing it to also finish off Zapdos later. DCP later decided to use Stealth Rock instead of attacking the snake and lost him the game. Dodge took a quick mat and moved on to the next round. Dejaras vs Toshi more hippo and sukun action from Deidara in game number one. From Toshi, I think that was the landers from the black market. Having two checks for Tornadoes in Heatran as a defensive check and Greninja as an offensive check, Toshi still had problems every time the birth came in. With the help of default HPI Thunderous, Deidara was able to get rid of the rocks beneath his feet and weakened Garchomp the rock setter itself allowing his tornadoes to have more spaces to play with. By sacking Heatran on turn 11, Toshi was closer to be in danger of tornadoes sweeping him. He also then let his Greninja quit by the hippo and now totally naked against the oncoming hurricanes. The situation got worse when Aegislad kept getting the damage it shouldn't have had. Eventually, Toshi's Amoongus had to deal with the three remaining Pokemon from Deidara. Uh, they were Mega Scizor, Suikun, and lastly Tornadus. Using up all his mana in dodging all the hurricanes, it was still not enough for Toshi to prevent Deidara from taking the first game as he just needed to get like one hurricane and the mushroom is dead. And that's exactly what it did. Just one. More Mega Latias action in game number two as it came from both sides, but it was looking at the mirror. It was like looking in the mirror. Toshi got a Pursuit Trapper in Tarantar and Deidara also had Weaver to do the same thing. Toshi got the kill on the Mega first though, simply because Deidara used his Mega Latias first. With the help of Keldeo, Toshi exerted a huge amount of pressure on Deidara's team. Every time the unicorn came in, it forced a 50-50 situation. If you click a water move, it will potentially kill Gliscor, Weavile, and Magnezone. And you cannot go like Alamomola either because you can like focus blast and yeah, basically focus blast and it can still kill Magnezone and Ferrothorn. So it, you have to go Gliscor on those turns. So uh, it's more favorable to the unicorn, even if. Yeah, uh, well, unless it's missed, right? It missed Hydro, it missed uh, Focus Blast, then maybe you have a chance to deal with it. But for now, it just came in and clicked Choice Specs. Like, whatever move you want to go for, and still got a result out of it. On turn 47, Toshi let his Keldeo take a Toxic for no reason, because it had a safe switch in, in Clefable. Probably went too far on predicting, you know, loss in the sauce. This seemed harmless at first, but proved to be crucial later. On turn 57, a flinch from Icicle Crash was all it took to light up a winning chance for Deirara somehow. He would have lost if he had not flinched the Clefable. Nonetheless, Toshi also saved Fable for some reason and then sacked Kelio instead, which is really confusing. It was the only the only thing that would take one hit from Wilva at that point. The combination of hacks and choke pushed uh, Toshi over the edge. Wilva took the win for Deidara in the Dodge vs. Scarzer. Currently dating the fairy called Mega Altaria. Dodge just couldn't leave it at home, not when he was up against Gazer. The date fell short on turn number 2 though as Altaria went down by touching a bird that's rocking helmet. Rocking a helmet. But worry not, Edge Slash was there to save the day. Two quick kills from the sword took Dash back into the game as Gazer lost his two main checks for Komoo. Wasn't expecting Ice Punch, he still had to let his guys go die for nothing and went Sizzle after, which was a fair check for the dragon. But Dodge prepared for it, Magnezone did what it's supposed to do and got rid of Mega Scizor. 
It then even managed to weaken Superior, allowing Dodge to sneak in with his Edge Slash later and kill the snake after losing his Latios in an unfortunate way. Still, Edge Slash secured Dodge's first game. One bot named Gliscor wasn't enough for Gaza, so he brought Crow the bat as well in game number two, but Dodge prefers a safer choice and went with only one bat. Crowbat made a fuss early on with a lot of super fangs and braver throwing arounds, but when you think about it, all the damage was on the regenerated Pokemon, so the rewards weren't as high as it seemed. Burning Weavile early with Scarf from Slowbro gave Dodge an advantage as Weavile could no longer pursue Trap Slowbro and Tornadoes effectively. But Keldeo can have Gauzer bring back the balance with Hidden Power Electric. He will be able to threaten Dodge's whole team with his Unicorn. One wrong click and Dodge will lose a Pokemon. It happened when Dodge chose his Chansey for a secret sword in the belly. Now Hydro Pump is also free, with Chansey's gone obviously. Kelio slowly, slowly but surely cutting its way through Dodge team as it won game number 2 for Gauzer with the Hidden Power Electric Tech. I wouldn't call it a tech but because in Pro it's kind of hard to get Hidden Power Electric. When you do, please use it because it was proved in this situation it was quite pretty good. Going into game number 3, Dodge once again picked his favorite Mega Charizard X. Gaza prepared for Dodge's usual, usual physical edge slash with Maniburst and Hippo, but the sword wasn't there. <sighs> Nonetheless, Gaza's weird Mega Lydia set with Carmine, Psyshock, and HP Fire surprised Dodge enough that he's lost his Tokus and Ferrothorn after a few blinks. Things were looking great for Dodge right now, however, however Knowing his win con, Dodge sticked to the plan. A small chance of winning with Choice Ban Azumaru. For more momentum provided for by some proper doubles and U turn landers, he was be able to put his Azul into 50 50 situations. He got two of them right with superpowers on Excadrill and then Ferrothorn. A Hydro Pump miss costed Gaza his carrier, should have scored there. From then, there was only Mandibeth left as Dodge watched Azumaru killing himself. I mean, a man best with his name. The match was over. We dodged Oda versus Dejara. Into upper bracket semi finals, no one wanted to sleep and fell down. Therefore, a hardcore defensive team structures came from both Oda and Deidara in the first game. A knockoff trade from turn number 1 hurt Oda more than Deidara. Without Toxic Orb, Gliscor won't be as free. Oda's unaware of Fable revealed to be Carmine instead of Heal Bell later on, signaling his opponent that it can indeed be Mega Larias 1v1, but at the same time can't shock off all the paralyzed that happened and could happen later. The first phase off start off with Deidara's critting Reuniclus with store powered, uh, but that status uh, wasn't the deciding factor. I think with the parallel and that will happen eventually and Mega Larias will win the 1v1 anyway. The next interaction between Ferrothorn and Clefable the Cutter will was paralyzed and leash it because it's unaware, it's not magic guard. So it was pretty obvious that the Cutter was have to switch out, but that's too late. With Claire being at 11%, Megalarias could easily pick up the win. A little hope came from Oda though, as he chanced 1v1 Megalarias with a couple of paralyzed and then Seismic tots its way through the Megalarias. But wait, there was still a Suicune who can do the exact same thing. What a surprise. So we can see Gliscor and Clefable left. As expected, it pulled the last trigger, the Sukun, and finished the remaining months from Oda, picking the first game won for Daidara. More offensive approaches from both sides in game number 3. I guess they didn't want to repeat the long game from last one. Deidara didn't have a good matchup in this case, but he did have the extremely 
threatening Keldeo and Helmet Amoongus plus Landris to limit the potential to sweep from Oda's Mega Swampert. Oda had no leash seat on Ferrothorn this time because his places were toxic. Mega Latia suddenly had room to play with. The only thing that can revenge kill it was Mega Swampert, but it had to deal with double rocky helmets. Having Tornado gone earlier as well, Oda can't really deal with the Amoongus very well. Game number two went to uh, Deirdara quickly, with Mega Latias definitely being the MVP that played a big part of him winning the match, winning the match overall. Dodge versus Deirdara. The upper bracket final, one step closer to the champion's title. Dodge seemed to be pretty adventurous this time though, as he brought hyper offense with Sash Chomp lead. Dejara, meanwhile, was more careful with the balance team. A no item Amoongus specifically chosen by him to deal with Bishop, and it worked out. Dejara also brought Alamomola for Mega Charizard X. It seemed like he got this in his hand. With everything of Dodge under check, uh, the hyper offense got shut down, and Dejara was now closer to the tour final than ever by winning game number one. Still bringing the same team, Dodge expected a better matchup this time with Deirdara's team now changed, but still had Flamethrower underwear Clefable who wasn't under Dodge's radar. Dodge lost his Bishop to the Devil Fairy and had to make some plays with Brilloom later, but with two bursts in Zapdos and Tornadoes, there could only be so little that Brilloom can do. Even Mega Charizard X cannot bring back hope for Dodge as it got one down too quickly as he forced to click Flare Blitz and got toxic by Hippo. With Zapdos and a Soft Tornadoes still being alive, Deirdara can still deal with Azumaru and Larias pretty well, he took the match very quick as Dash now had to fight back against the lower brackets winner to go into the final. Namang vs Dodge Namang had a great run in the lower bracket and now he would take his chance to make his way to the ultimate face-off against Deidara, but Dodge is standing in his way. Dodge was still as adventurous as ever with Mega Beedrill and Hydreigon on his team. Namang had a Keldeo which can be quite dangerous as well, but Dodge also has a Slowbro and Namang didn't have uh, hidden power electric like like last time who's who who had that i forgot thunder wave slow bro being able to slow down tornadoes early made a huge impact as it seemed like a really good mon against dash and now it's slow and potentially didn't move couldn't move rather because of the paralyze dodge tried to pressure namang with greninja succeeded in killing ferrothorn and dealt quite an useful amount of damage on Keldeo and Tornadus before it went down. He then pressured again with uh, Hydreigon. Now that Tornado was slow, there was only Keldeo that's faster, but then it, uh, the Keldeo dies to, I believe, slow bro anyway. Uh, it was also a work up variant. Setting up on the right turn helped dodge a lot. With everything weakened in the end, Namang had to take the loss in the first game. There with Mega Charizard X, Dodge with his most trusted team came back. Namang didn't necessarily have a good matchup there, but he for sure still had a 2 to win. Dodge tried to pull a sweep very early on by setting up Quiver with his Volcarona in front of Clefable. Not a great idea because he got Thunder Waved and then tricked by Rotom. Could have been dangerous for Namang there. Uh, thinking Mega Latias had store power, calm, mind, calm mindset, Dodge went Bishop on it and saved his Volcarona and then took a meteor in the face. Not enough health left to set up Sword Stand. That was certainly a misplay. He then tried to set up Brock and banged on Mega Charizard X under the veil to save the day, but Namang still had Rocky Helmet Landris left to deal with it. Failing to break through, Dodge gave the second game to Namang. The match is now balanced. Naming went back to the team he used for game number one, Dodge also chose to switch his team to a more balanced one. 
dodging a stone edge on turn 9. Dodge Zabdot escaped the dead and ran, but then a bad double on turn 11 brought it back to get scolded into the grave by Keldu. With no more Defog, no more Zapdos, things didn't look well for Dodge at all. Now that Naman can pressure with more hazards, Mega Venusaur, however, was quite still difficult to deal with for Naman because he had to hit a hurricane. If you're easy to get angry, I suggest you should cover your screen right now because thing is about to get crazy. Like I said, plenty of opportunity to hit hurricane against Venusaur though. On turn 37, I believe. After Naman killed uh, Mega Latios, and then uh, I think Galdio went down to. No, uh, it was Edge Slash. Went down to the full switch. Uh, Dodge, unaware of Carmine uh, Cafable with Moonlight, came to the rescue. It almost managed to sweep Naman if it wasn't for the low PP of Moonlight. Uh, backed up by Gyarados flinches by Waterfall. Uh, I think a couple of flinches was enough. So the clever would was very low. Good effort nonetheless. Now, I did say that Naming had plenty of opportunity to hit Hurricane against the Venusaur, right? But I didn't say he landed on any of them. So the five Hurricane misses, if I remember correctly, with three in the end, was too much to say a word as Naming lost the match. Pretty crazy how that last ended. Mm, Dodge now had one more chance to face against Dejara. Dodge versus Dejara again. And it's time for the last showdown, Dodge taking revenge on Dejara. With Tinted Lens Yan Mega in the team, it did get a nice kill on Kofebo very early on by bug buzzing twice, but then bombed by Mega Venusaur on the wrong prediction. A night nice ice sickle crash flinch with Riva on Mega Venusaur put Dodge in a great spot, but then a nice double again from Deidara on Kofebo brought back his Venusaur to life immediately. But wait, another flinch happened on turn 22, and Mega Venusaur was in danger again. Deidara still decided to save his Venusaur though, as he knew it's gonna become really important, and he can still heal on majority of Dodge remaining members, like Ferrothorn, Cafebo, and then Slowbro. He finally decided to heal himself on Slowbro, but took a thunder wave in the process. Mega Venusaur somehow still broke through all the para art to hit all the necessary hit, like HP Fire on Ferrothorn. Giga Drain and Sludge Bomb on Clefable. Uh, especially on Clefable, the Clefable was uh, Carmine up. You just need to get Para like once and you're done. But he did it. And it opened the path for Data to win in game number one. Game number two started with a quick kill executed by Greninja on Suicune. Dejara lost his favorite Pokemon in the semi star structure. He then later was able to trap and kill a relaxed Ferrothorn with Magnezone, which allowed his Altaria to have more openings. Dodge attempted to use Mega Absol this time to threaten, Mega, uh, to threaten Magnezone, but it didn't work and it got one shot by Thunderbolt. Sad. The Dara now just had to weaken Edge Slash enough so he can win with Mega Altaria. Of course, he succeeded in that pretty easily thanks to Magnezone because it trapped uh, Ferrothorn and it did a lot. It did a lot for him and just with Ferrothorn gone and Edge Slash is life orb so it weakened itself, this uh, didn't take too much time for him to win with Mega Altaria anyway. So he eventually won game number 2 with Mega Altaria. Just like a promise, if this game number 2 would dodge last game in the tour, he wanted to bring Pangoro. He did bring it with a couple of strange friends with Don Fan and Kyurem. Scarf Kyurem really did well in this game though, with the momentum built from Mega Beatrice's U-turn. Deidara didn't have much for Kyurem, but he can still revenge kill back by Kyurio, who was equally threatening. Pangoro as, usually, as usual went down without doing anything to Greninja, which is kind of sad again, all this 
dark Pokemon like Abzol and Pangoro like last game. Yeah, they they, they got killed, murdered. Uh, but with Kieran's pressure and Bidu's uh, be true sliver of help, Dodge took an unexpected win while using a bold team. The last standoff is uh, like one health Mega B true versus Greninja. And that was a pretty close game. Too close for comfort, actually. Having too much fun, Dodge continued to bring heat to bring hit with Mega Hound Doom and Toxic Growth. Mega Hound Doom did quite a bit, but wasn't enough. Well, fun was uh, when it was, was fun when it lasted. By using Edge Slash to weaken Mega Hound Doom with a nice prediction, they Dada finished off the Hound Doom and later on proceed to Sword Stand on Toxic Grow, grab the trophy for Dada as he crowned the champions of this month's ladder tour. Woo! Now you you can watch the the rest. Why I'm gonna work on the start for this tour as you can see later right now.